We still have some time before uh, we enter the oceanic area. So before we enter, we want to make sure that the fuel crossfeed valve is working. So we can turn on crossfeed valve. And it says open. And we can confirm it here. Fuel crossfeed is working. Oh, we can turn it off again. <clears throat> in case we have to transfer fuel from uh, one tank to another, uh, in case of an emergency or if we want to balance for any reason. And um, in, when you're flying transatlantic, you will be flying in MNPS airspace. That stands for Minimum Navigation Performance System. And it's between uh, flight level 285 and the flight level 420. And also we should do position reports. So every 10 degrees of uh, latitude, we should report our position to um, the station that we are uh, talking to. And if we are above latitude 70, so if we are above uh, up here, it's not on the map, we should report every 20 degrees of latitude because it's um, a much shorter distance uh, to make it uh, every report approximately every hour. And we will do it later uh, when, we, when we reach at this position, we'll do a po our first re position report. And uh, for example, if we deviate from uh, the speed, 5% of TAS or uh, plus minus 3 minutes, we have to tell the controller that we are deviating from, uh, from the time or the expected uh, time of uh, arrival. So uh, that's very important. And ETOPS stands for Extended Twin Operations. And all uh, twin engine airplanes have um, an ETOPS rating. So the Airbus A320 family has 180 minutes of ETOPS. So this nut track uh, will not work in reality because if we have 180 minutes, it means that if we lose an engine, uh, we cannot be more than 180 minutes from the nearest uh, suitable airport where we can land. So that's why. And you get the ETOPS rating uh, depending on what type of aircraft it is. How, uh, how safe the airplane is basically and uh, if it's kind of new uh, you, you have to the airplane has to prove that uh, it can uh, be safe and um, if it's if it's good you can get extended it ups range or minutes Okay, so do you want to talk a bit about uh, the, the nut tracks? Yeah, your controls. My controls. So for uh, westerly north Atlantic tracks, we have the tracks from Alpha to Golf. And uh, today, for example, we're applying to track Echo. And within a time period from 11.30 to 19.00 Zulu time, we need to be at uh, 30 west of uh, longitude. Uh, for uh, easterly tracks, North Atlantic tracks, we have uh, from Uniform to Zulu and within a time period from 1 to 8 uh, Zulu time, we need to be again at uh, 30 west of longitude. And TMI stands for Track Message Identification and it comes out every 24 hours. And in the TMA you have uh, all the information about the routing and uh, general information about the active North Atlantic tracks. And for example, here we have, we can see which uh, flight levels we can use. Okay, you have control. I have control. 
So we have just passed uh, Malot. It's our uh, entry point for the oceanic airspace. That means that uh, we need to make a position report and it will be uh, something like this. Uh, you, you talk to the, the station with your call sign and then you report your position, what time it is, what flight level you're flying at and your speed and uh, that you are estimating uh, your next waypoint at this time and after that um, what, what waypoint will come after that but we will do an actual position report when we reach our next waypoint so um, it's also important to squawk 2000 30 minutes upon entry so let's do that squawking 2000 we should do that for 30 minutes so uh, the next position report will be at uh, 53 north 020 west so it's approximately uh, 30 minutes so we will see we'll make the report there you have control? I have control so in case we're not able to maintain the quick clearance we should offset the track uh, 50 nautical miles and the climb or descend to 500 feet if we're flying below 410 flight level. And uh, 300 feet vertical deviation is allowed to avoid uh, bad weather. Would you mind to say something about the selective calling? Um, <clears throat> if you want, or otherwise I can, I can say something about it. Alright, my control. You have control. So selective calling, yeah. Uh, cell count stands for selective calling and uh, it's not necessarily unique for every aircraft uh, because there are a limited amount of codes but um, for example if the controller wants you something you will uh, hear a sound in the cockpit and you can pick up your headset and talk to the controller the reason that we use CELCAL is that um, <clears throat> when we fly over long distances, VF, VHF radios is not working very good. The range is not enough, so we have to fly and talk on uh, high frequency. And uh, on that frequency band we have a lot of static noise, which makes it very, very uncomfortable to listen to for long periods of time. <clears throat> So we're coming up on our first waypoint, which is uh, 53 north 020 west. And when we get there, we should do a uh, position report. And uh, I have also, <clears throat> in the preparation, I have drawn, of course, uh, the nut track that we are following, and also the closest track, the northern and the southern. So the northern track is uh, Delta and the south is Foxtrot and uh, it's good to know if, in case you have to, uh, yeah, for navigation uh, reasons and so on. And when you prepare a flight, for example, over the water or if you don't have any good diversion uh, airfield, let's say, Mm, it's also good to uh, calculate your point of safe return and your um, point of equal time. So, point of safe return, you need to know uh, how long your endurance is. For example, how long you can fly with the fuel that you have on board. And you use a specific uh, formula to calculate this. So, uh, you know uh, where, where you have to make a decision where to turn back if you get an engine failure or if you, if you need to proceed to your um, planned destination. So you can use your ground speed uh, to and from. So it's a specific formula for that one. And the point of equal time, it also involves the ground speed to and from. So you know uh, where, where, if you should turn back, if something happens, or if you 
should continue to our destination. <clears throat> we have about uh, 66 nautical miles left to our waypoint. So now we are getting closer to, to this point here, waypoint. We'll make a right turn and our next one will be uh, this one. And here is uh, latitude, uh, longitude uh, zero, 030. Zero. So uh, <clears throat> that means that if we are flying, as Marcus said before, if we're flying on west tracks, we need to be here at a specific time and if we're flying on the eastern tracks we have another time period to uh, to be here we need to be we need to cross this uh, longitude within that uh, time period we are getting closer to our waypoint so it's uh, time to make a position report, we can wait a little bit and uh, 30 minutes have passed now so we can squawk our original squawk code. <clears throat> so we can do the position report now. Of course, I need my microphone. Shanwick, Baltic 247 with position report. Baltic 247, go ahead with your position report. Reporting 53 uh, North, 020 West, 1330 Sulu, flight level 360, Mach decimal 79er, estimating 54 North, 030 West at 1430 Sulu, thereafter 52 North, 040 West, Baltic 247. Baltic 247, Shenway, copy your report of 247. All right, so uh, that is pretty much how you do a position report. Um, you read where you are, the time, flight level, your speed, where you're going, and the position after, and they will read it back and you will just confirm it. We always have to improvise when we fly full flight simulators, and that's what we did today to uh, make something interesting for you. We hope that you do like it. Unfortunately, we will not make it to the other shore. And if you have some ideas for the next video, you can comment below and let us know what you want to see next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks. <laughs>